welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show with a fondness for fibs. On David Mitchell's team tonight, the host of the Radio One Breakfast Show. Yes, the Noel Edmonds of our time. It's Nick Grimshaw. <laughs> The star of Ask Rod Gilbert, Rod Gilbert's work experience, and the Rod Gilbert radio show. Anyone? It's Rod Gilbert! <laughs> and on Lee Mack's team tonight, a TV presenter who has hosted Crufts on three occasions, which in dog years is almost a lifetime. It's Claire Balding! <laughs> And a comedian who left a New York performing arts school with a degree in musical theatre. A fantastic achievement, but he doesn't want to make a song and dance of it. It's the star of Catastrophe, <laughs> Rob Delaney! <laughs> and so we'll begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction, and Rod is first up tonight. One Friday after school, I swapped our family cat for a scotch egg <laughs> and a smurf. <laughs> when my mum found out on Monday morning, she made me swap them back. Right. Lee. Well, when was this, first of all? How old were you? 13. But more important than how old was he or anything to do with him, the cat. What? I mean, seriously, we're very concerned about the cat. I am. I'm a bit more concerned about the Smurf, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm most concerned. The, the Scotch egg, you just... What was your logic? Well, what, Would you well, hide it under your bed for a whole you, weekend? Why don't you three have a little chat, and when you worked out collectively what you're most concerned about, come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Can I start? Please do. Okay. Please do. What okay. was the cat called? What kind of cat? What colour, please? The cat was called Snowdrop, <laughs> and as the name implies, it was Tortoise Shell. <laughs> Who did you swap with? Uh, should I name him? I don't know, unless he's in prison uh, at the moment and he's... I don't know, I haven't seen him for a long time. It was a, a, a kid who lived on an estate okay. nearby. Just give us his first name. Lee. Oh. <laughs> Just with the scotch egg, you wanted the scotch egg. <laughs> you wanted the scotch egg Just so badly scotch. that you traded a living mammal for it. And yeah. then you just put it under your bed for 48 hours? <laughs> to, to be fair, trading a scotch egg for a living mammal is exactly what's necessary in the manufacture process of a scotch egg. <laughs> you start off... The people have decided they have live pigs, but they don't like the live pigs enough. What they want is no pigs but scotch eggs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Why did you want the scotch egg? I presume for the obvious that you like them and you wanted to eat it. Yes. Why did you just eat it there and then? Why didn't I just eat... You said you swapped them back again on the Monday. So why did... Which, which yeah. it, that, that suggests you still well, had what, the scotch egg on Well, hang on. on I mean, was it the same one, or had you consumed it and then you just had to give a scotch egg back? That's right, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the <laughs> bloody Welsh <laughs> Mafia, this. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help him out. <laughs> could I get back to the cat? The cat's obviously very territorial, so would the cat not try and come home? Because they normally mm. do if they've gone out away. He didn't. Mm. Not that weekend. <laughs> Talk us through the actual exchange process. I tell you what, Rob, you stand up. We'll go through it. Okay. On, I'll, I'll I am it. standing up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll role play it with you. I, so I'm right. Okay. So imagine I've got my family cat in my hand. All right. And you in with this hand, you have a scotch. Where, where, where are we now, Rod? Where are we? We're, we're in are, Wales. We're, are we in Wales? We're in Wales. Oh. We're in Wales. <laughs> 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 Isn't that nice? <laughs> Let's nice. Let's just take a minute. Let's just take a minute. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Right. So we are in Wales. Yeah. I've got a cat in my hand. All right. Right. You've got in this hand a Smurf and a Scotch egg. Yes. Right. Now we swap them over. All right. Here we go. Right. This, this is how it happens. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's... I love my lord and as the mechanics of the exchange. Wow. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you can put the cat down now. <laughs> but gently, yeah. gently, Rob, gently, yes. So what do you think, Lee? Does this sound truthful to you? I don't think he's shown any affection for Snowdrop, and on that basis alone, I think it can't be true. Well, weirdly, I, the exact same reason, I think it, it is true, because oh. I know him to be heartless. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you some affection. But I can, what, what do you want to know about Snowdrop? I can show affection with Snowdrop. All right. How would you stroke him? Her. <laughs> no! Got ya. 
That, you have changed the sex of that cat at least three times. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, you, you have. have. I don't <laughs> think vets should agree to do that. <laughs> It's always been a female cat. What, what are you thinking, Rob? Are you, are you thinking it's the truth? It's really starting to crumble at the end here, so I'm, I'm smelling a lie. Both saying a lie. My team say lie. We will go with lie. OK, you're saying lie. Rod, truth or lie? It is a... <laughs> lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was a lie. Uh, Rod didn't swap his family cat for Scotch egg yeah. and a smurf. Uh, Nick, you're up next. OK, here you go. I once called a friend in New York and asked her to call the police in London because I thought there was a burglar at my house in London. Uh, police. Where were you when you made the call? In the house. Why didn't you phone...? The police. Yes. <laughs> because I'd been messaging my friend. Uh, I felt like she'd gone, so I called her, and as I was on the phone to her, I thought there was someone breaking into the house. So I was like, you should phone the police. What did you hear, exactly? I just heard, like, irregular noises from downstairs. Irregular steps, noises. Doors closing, so I was like, well, who's that? And were you living on your own at the time? I did have a housemate. And but... Did you not think it might be that person? No. Why? Because at the time, I was doing a nighttime radio show. So I would get home late, and she'd always, like, be quiet when you get in at 1 o'clock in the morning, cos I'm asleep. Ah, so you assumed her to be asleep? Yeah. Why don't you put the phone down and phone the police? Because I didn't want to speak in case the burglar... But you are speaking, you're telling her <laughs> to phone the police. Well, I was like, I need to go, I think there's someone here. Call the police. So that's why I had to get off the phone and not use the phone. Maybe. Well, look, 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 Nick, Nick. let's reenact it. OK. You, I'm going to be your friend... OK. ..in New York. She's yeah. an American. She is. Thank God. I thought you were going to say, it's by coincidence, she sounds like Ronnie Corbett. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> She's a very sassy Jewish lady. All right. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> now, Nick, how are things going? <laughs> Over there. Did you say she didn't sound like Ronnie Corbett? <laughs> no, she's she the opposite to Ronnie Corbett. Oh, she's a kind of... You... She's like New York Jewish kind of person like that. <laughs> Pretty spot on. Yeah. OMG! <laughs> <laughs> so, listen. You finished your radio show. How did it go? I love your impressions, you know that. But you're texting. We don't need the voice. <laughs> oh, he wants me to call him. Sure I will. <laughs> Hi, Amy. How's America? Oh, I love it. There's so many Americans here. <laughs> hey, what's that noise? Hey, what is that noise? Oh. I, I heard something. I can, I can hear something downstairs. Oh, have you were having trouble with your stomach again? <laughs> Downstairs. It's somewhere like downstairs in the house downstairs. I pretend to be asleep. You call the police. What, the <laughs> NYPD? No. <laughs> My police. All right, I'll call. OK. Love you. So I put the phone down, and then I just go like this. And then fear for my life. Well, hold on, because it's all happening stateside. <laughs> <laughs> We, we can go on like this all night. <laughs> so then what happened? So go on, talk through the rest so of the story. So then she makes the call. Yeah. So that's like, call the police, cos there's not the 999 number, there's, like, the, the police round the corner, you know, the local police. She went and logged on and looked for your <laughs> local police station. Yeah. Why didn't you phone... You don't have to log on. Why didn't you phone 999? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Sunbeam, you do on my Atari. <laughs> So she called the police, yeah. and then uh, it turned out that, that it wasn't an intruder at all. It How was... did you find that out? I found that out when my flatmate burst in. What she burst into your room for at night? Because she had been on the wine. So the bang, bang, bang noises were her, like, looking for wine or something, I don't know. And, and you said what? I said, oh, my you God. hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> That I thought I was going to be killed by the intruder. Uh, the police are coming. So yeah. then we were like, well, we need to call the police now. So you phoned me back in New York. Go on. No, I didn't go <laughs> You want me to cancel them? <laughs> You're on your way, honey. I, I just went direct. Oh, them... yo, so when you want me, I'm right here waiting. <laughs> but when you don't want me, you just drop me. Well, screw you, Grimshaw. <laughs> I'm surprised Amy doesn't have any friends where she lives. 
What are you thinking, Lee? What do we think, Rob? I believe it. I you believe, believe it? I believe this man. I've been taken for a ride. I like it. <laughs> You're starting to sound more and more like Amy every day. <laughs> So what are you thinking, Claire? I, I believe it. Well, I think it must be true, then. True. OK. Uh, Nick, truth or lie? It is... true. Oh. Oh. Mm. 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 Yes, it's true. Nick did ring his friend in New York and ask her to call the police for him. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Greg. <laughs> so, Claire, what is Greg to you? This is Greg, and he is the RSPCA officer who came to my aid when a squirrel climbed into my handbag and wouldn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Delaney, how do you know Greg? Well, this is Greg, and we once stayed up all night together holding on to a fence when a game of who can hold on to the fence the longest <laughs> got out of hand. <laughs> Lee, what's your relationship with Greg? This is Greg. I was so nervous about appearing on TV for the first time that I made him come with me and pretend we were a double act. <laughs> David's team, where do you want to start? So, Claire, where were you when the squirrel jumped into your handbag? I was filming in Devon mm -hmm. for Country File. And I was doing one of those links, you know, when you walk along the cliff top, essentially. And oh, yeah. I'd left my bag under a tree. And sometimes there are little sweeties left in it. And I assume that is why the squirrel got in it. Yeah. You know when you get those selection chocolates and there's some, th the topics that nobody likes? I think I'd left, except unless you're a squirrel. Yeah. Yeah. In which case, <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's the one thing they say about squirrels. They're not fussy when it comes to Quality Street. <laughs> So, as you approached the bag, what yes. did you see? How were you alerted to It this? was moving. And what did you do then? Did you I... continue to approach? Yeah, I thought, there's something in my bag. And then mm. when I got close, I thought, it'll jump out because I'm near to it, but mm. it wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're approaching the bag, Claire. The bag the, is it, moving. It's moving about. You know yes. there's a squirrel. You continue to approach. Yes. What happens then? The squirrel's doing its thing and continues probably, to rummage. Yeah, going yeah. through my diary. I my Helping phone. Helping itself to a strawberry cream. Yeah. You know, I don't know yeah. why people are so fussy. <laughs> <laughs> the cameraman said, "Don't touch it, because because you might get bitten." And he said, "We'll call the RSPCA. They'll know what to do." Well, had you tried shaking? Had you tried tipping it upside down? No, because all I've seen women do that my... to get things out. No, not if all, not if you've got earrings in the bag as well. In the middle of a field in Devon, you're not going to do that. <laughs> That's a great image of the squirrel wearing the earrings and reading the diary. <laughs> She's got a busy December, no wonder she's got a four days. <laughs> so they rang the RSPCA, Greg came up to a yes. cliff top in Devon. It did take a while. And the squirrel was still in your bag. Yeah. <laughs> How did he get it out? How it, did he get the squirrel as out? As it bar? happened, I think the squirrel had probably had enough by then, so he didn't even have to do very oh, much. Oh, the squirrel came out of his own accord? Indeed. Oh. Yes, he <laughs> approached the bag. All right, David, what about the others? OK, Rob. A fence-holding-on contest yes. that got out of hand. Yes. You said all night, Rob, was that right? It went on all night, the fence-holding... Correct. Are you standing on the fence and holding... Are you no, we're standing, standing next to a fence. We're standing next to a wooden picket fence, touching it. Mm -hmm. touching and where it. were you? We were in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. One of you said, I'm not saying it's boring here in Massachusetts, <laughs> but who fancies holding onto that fence all night? <laughs> 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 Fair. We, we had, there had just been a documentary that was sweeping the nation called Hands on a Hard Body, and it was about these people who could win a Toyota pickup truck if whoever held on to, whoever touched it for the longest. So we had just seen this documentary, yeah. and we were very drunk, so we thought, we were like, ha, wouldn't it be funny if we did this? And then we did it for nine hours. <laughs> and who is Greg? I mean, how was he there? Greg is the older brother. Uh, you can see he's quite a bit older than me. We, he was the <laughs> older brother of my friend that I went to college with. Did you learn a lot about Greg? More than I'd care Could to know. Could we have five <laughs> Greg facts? Uh, Opened his own bakery. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a bit, that's a big one. <laughs> Who won? We agreed 
at 5 o'clock in the morning that we were both winners, and that <laughs> as 5 a.m. approached, So latitude, you started this at what time? About 8 p.m. You started that at 8 p.m.? That seems very early to start quite... a fence-holding game. Yeah, it's quite early to, be, to go that strange. Yeah. Yeah. When did you start it drinking? Eh, four or so in the afternoon. All right, maybe. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're... <laughs> OK, now what about Lee? Uh, OK, Lee. Um, Just yeah. remind us of what it was that you said. This is Greg, and uh, I was so nervous about my first TV appearance that I made him come along with me and pretend we were a double act. What was <laughs> your first TV appearance? It was on a programme called Pump Television. P what's that? <laughs> <laughs> it was a sort of magazine sort of type show. It was a bit funky and happening. It was like the one show, but for people that are allowed out in the day. <laughs> <laughs> And what were you doing on the on the show? Uh, just being interviewed. It was Reading Television, and I, I just won a competition for new comedians up in Edinburgh. What year was this? 1995. But you didn't win in Edinburgh till 1997. Oh, that's right. Sorry, I've completely messed up the story. I went on the show, Pump TV, to tell them that I could predict the future. <laughs> You know, you said to us that you were, you were a double act. What sort of a double act? So I rang up and said, oh, sorry, I'm actually... Uh, I do a bit of double act work as well. Can I bring my double act partner on as well? And they said, yeah, fine, what does your double act partner do? And without thinking, I said, he's a juggler. <laughs> what happened when you got there? Did he have to get there and, and juggle? Well, this is the thing. There's another twist to this story, because yeah. obviously... Is the other twist um, to this story there is a complete lie? No, that... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that'd be a twist. <laughs> So he comes, he comes on the show, and I tell him fairly last minute, I think maybe an, an hour or two's notice, oh, by the way, I may have told them that you were a juggler. So now he's panicking, isn't he? Mm. So what does he do? Cos he thinks he's going to be asked to juggle on the show, and he can't juggle. Yeah. So <laughs> he bandaged his arm up. <laughs> and so thus, he wasn't... If they said, can you juggle, he can... He can say, I can't, I've hurt my arm. So um, all the way there in the car, you're not talking about why you're driving all those... We didn't to... drive together, I couldn't. He'd injured his arm juggling. No, that's <laughs> not... <laughs> Um, that's not right, is he? No, I'm starting to think. Uh, no, I met him at the studio because he okay. actually is from Reading. <gasps> that's handy, isn't it? That was good. Wasn't it? <laughs> was there any other guests on the TV show? I can't remember. I think there was a, a person who had a dog and the dog did something. Yeah. Uh, there was a bit of. It's amazing. Well, maybe he actually <laughs> didn't have a dog, but he just persuaded the dog to come on because he was nervous. <laughs> All right, we need an answer. So, um, David's team is Greg Claire's squirrel saviour, Rob's fence feeler. Or Lee's pretend partner. It's a pretty unappetising menu, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe Claire uh, Baldy. I don't, I don't believe that she would be scared. Somebody who hosts Country Fire. If there was a sound man there with a boom, you could have used that furry boom to entice... Like, maybe you could have pretended it was a bad chip. <laughs> That, oh, so if you were a lady and you saw your handbag moving, you wouldn't immediately think squirrel in there, would you? You'd think, oh, God, it's gone off again. <laughs> <laughs> what about Rob's story? There was a lot of detail with Rob's fence-holding mm. story. I like Rob's. It could very well be true, but... I think so. Greg's hands were made for holding on to fences. <laughs> so you, th you think Rob... Rob, yeah. who do you think? I think because Lee so rarely sounds plausible, I think it'd be nice to give him a little go. <laughs> I think that when, when Lee went on Pump TV <laughs> in 1995 with an average viewing figure of 14, <laughs> he was too nervous to go on his own. I do. I do. <laughs> yeah, I think Rob. I think You're going to say Rob Delaney. That's okay. what we're going for. Yeah. OK, so, Greg, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Greg, and I pretended to be in a double act with Lee. <laughs> yes, Greg is Lee's pretend partner. Now, you have a picture of Lee and Greg on TV together. There they are. See Greg I in the picture. Who's the really skinny who's fella? Who's the seventy-year-old man who's <laughs> got it? <laughs> I'll tell you what, David. Coming from you, that is rich. <laughs> it was it Greg. True. I was very thin. I was nine stone. Though. I was a skinny lad. I mean, good mm. lord. But we've made great advances in medicine, and <laughs> he's here with us today. Thanks very much, Greg. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lives, and we start with... <coughs> it's David. 
The night before the bin men come, <laughs> I go to bed wearing earmuffs. <laughs> that way I'm spared their irritating early morning clank of trash. <laughs> what day do the bin men come? Thursday morning. I th it's instantly believable because yeah. we know him to be grumpy and, yeah. you know, intolerant yeah. and and easily disturbed. Oh, hang yeah. on, can I have a go with the list? <laughs> <laughs> Why ear muffs and not just little in-ear thingies, you know? I don't like things... Uh, in your ears. ..in there. I don't so... like to be, you know, penetrated. <laughs> what do your ear muffs look like, David? They're grey. Do they have, like, a nice plastic strap along the top? Uh, no, they're two single, separate muffs. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they're, yeah. Oh, I see. You put them on your ears, then put a hoover on your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Precisely. Precisely. Yeah. You have to yeah. block all the holes quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, they have got a, a, a linking plasticity. Are your muffs fluffy? <laughs> they're, 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 yeah, they have a... I would say, you know, there's... Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. Yes, yeah. they're fluffy. <laughs> What do you sleep in, apart from the earmuffs? Uh, uh, nothing at all. So you're no, naked? No, some, no, some, no I... Uh, pyjamas. So sometimes your relatively new wife wakes up in a, on a Thursday morning <laughs> with your matching pyjamas and earmuffs. No, 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 no. The earmuffs don't match the pyjamas. No, I know yeah. that, but... Yeah. Does she secretly quite like you in the earmuffs? I mean, like, does she say you look very sweet? It's not become a problem in our relationship. I would, have, I I would have ended the sentence as, does she secretly quite like you? <laughs> <laughs> because I get phone calls often from her going, I don't know how this can carry on. The earmuffs, the matchy pyjamas. Now, when do the muffs go on? Because we get into bed at night, don't we? But we have several things to accomplish before <laughs> we go to sleep. Yeah. Be it a quick look at an iPad <laughs> or tablet, be it browsing a book, or be it celebrating a very special aspect of the marriage. <laughs> Would... That's broadcastable. Would... <laughs> what, your, the actual your event... Your proudest <laughs> boast. <laughs> So would you wait for the muffs well, to go on until all other business has been attended to? All other business has been attended to, be it a crossword or something even less broadcastable, <laughs> has all happened before the muffs go on. The only thing I have not done, and I'm very particular about this, before I put the earmuffs on, is go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I find it very difficult to put them on whilst <laughs> okay, but, conscious. But what if, what if you've had a particularly exerting crossword, yeah. OK? <laughs> the two of you have been going at this crossword <laughs> for <laughs> half an hour, 40 minutes, relentlessly. <laughs> you finally finish the crossword. <laughs> Let's say 14 down has been mm. particularly tricky. And you fall back when, oh, my God, that was fantastic. <laughs> Where are me muffs? <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's just a thing in our relationship, <laughs> but crosswords don't take us that long. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking, Lee and Lee's team? Um, what do we think? I think that it is not true. OK. You don't you have to wake up to pee sometimes? That's when I'd throw them on, you know, all night. I don't know. I don't always wake up to pee. I wish <laughs> I... <laughs> so, uh, you're saying it's... What do we think? Essentially, I think it's a well-told lie. You think it's a lie? Mm. OK, we'll say it's a lie. You're saying lie. OK, David, truth or lie? It is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. David doesn't wear earmuffs the night before the bin men come. Next. It's Lee. Because I can never remember the phonetic alphabet, I have invented <laughs> one of my own, based on things I can see from my bedroom window. <laughs> now I never forget it. <laughs> now, in case there are people watching, perhaps, who don't know, what the phonetic alphabet Can is. Can I just say, I'm one of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, you know, it's kind of Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. Why is that called the phonetic alphabet? There's nothing phonetic about it. <laughs> <laughs> just do us a favour, lads, keep yeah. discussing. It gives me more thinking, sir. <laughs> so, Lee, yes. take us through it. Well, where would you like to start? Z. A. <laughs> a. <laughs> a. 
<laughs> a for apple tree. And, and, and to the point where I will do this on the phone when they say, what's your postcode? Really? I will use these. Well, things. carry on. B, this is the one that can get confusing. B for bird. Because right. obviously the bird isn't always there, but you can always hear or sense a bird. So be <laughs> for the bird. Yeah. You can always see the cat. <laughs> see for cat. There's always a cat. I think I know why there's no birds. <laughs> D. So yeah, you know what I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised the cat's still there. I really. Do, do you sometimes really find have. there's no C I, when there's a D? Often I can say D. There'll be no. There'll definitely be no C and B yeah. ever. You know. <laughs> We don't need it all. What's what's H? H will be for hospital. <laughs> what's V? V is for a word I'm not allowed to say on national television. <laughs> but all I will say is the next door neighbour, she likes to sunbathe naked. <laughs> <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless, which is this is weird one. Can't do C and V at the same time because she's got an allergy to cats. Ah. Oh, no, that's a shame, isn't it? Ah. Oh, I would say. <laughs> What's the name of the hospital? What? What? <laughs> H. You said H for hospital. I don't, all I can see Which... is the A and E sign, or as I call it, uh, <laughs> Apple Tree and uh, Edna. <laughs> Take me to Apple Tree and Edna. <laughs> so you, do, you don't know the name no, of your not interested. Hospital. Not interested. <laughs> I don't need to know the name of it. <laughs> I'm afraid at that point, I and only at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you. What, otherwise I, I, seemed like I don't know the name system. of it, but I can certainly spell hospital for you. For hospital! You said it's for hospital! Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. That, that was... Even though I say so myself, that was a Can bad mistake. <laughs> so, what are your team thinking? I don't believe it at all. At all. What about you, Nick? See, I think that yeah. he does do this, and he's made it a nice, lovely story to throw us, but I think that Lee actually does, when he can't think of the real-life ones, yeah. will say Edna Just to be clear, perhaps the most, the most fascinating moment of the whole evening, Nick, you think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. OK, it's time to decide. A lie. Lie. OK, you say it's a lie. Well, here we go. Lee, is what? it true or is it a lie? You have to actually ask. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all a lie. Lee hasn't invented his own phonetic alphabet. <laughs> and that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. And I can reveal that Lee's team have won by four points to one. <laughs> but it's not just a team game. My individual liar of the week this week is Rob Delaney. <laughs> Yes, it's Rob Delaney. All night long, the American has been lying through his perfectly aligned, pearly white teeth. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>